Hey everyone, so I bought one of these uh, flexi desks here, this white topped one with the base down here that moves up and down. It's a standing desk or a sitting desk. And um, this isn't meant to be a damning video or anything. I just uh, going to show you how uh, I assembled it based on their instructions and maybe some uh, issues that I came across while uh, assembling the whole process of the desk and whatnot. One of the things I wanted you to see was that I got this E7 Plus desk with the double legs there. And uh, for the top, I got this chipboard and I got it in white. So that was the desk I had ordered. And it is what I received albeit the chipboard was damaged. Another customer service issue is I had sent several emails on trying to get the points from the order added to my uh, balance here and it never happened for my account. Uh, it's been several weeks so I thought I would mention that as well. Uh, I opened the account immediately after making the order uh, and I thought it would add it to the balance. It didn't. It just gave me a credit for um, opening an account, which you'll, anyone can get that 80 points. We'll see here. It says you should get one point for every dollar spent. I spent uh, uh, almost 1800 on this scenario. Actually, you can see the exact price of what I spent on the E7 Plus desk of $1,839.98. We've got some new bases for a new standing desk that's coming in. I'm going to check them out and get them set up. Let's see what's happening with the venue challenge. Here's a first look at the first opening of the box on the base that I am going to put together. A little spacer piece, that's useless. A couple pieces that came out of the top here. Let's get rid of these. Looks like the control unit of some sort. We'll get to the rest of it later. We got this piece here. We'll take it out of plastic and keep moving. Looks like a gear of some sort. Another pile. Let's dig deeper. And that's where we're at right now. Ooh. Flexi spot. Looks like the manual. This is that next big piece.
This is desk frame box two of two. And this is what it looks like when I open it. Pretty much looks like the other box. I'm guessing it's going to be a mirror image, but we will see. Another controller piece. You know, it's uh, cables and uh, bolts. So. This stuff, a piece like this. Right away, they, they, these are super heavy duty here. They're not light, they're just like 30 pounds just for this piece. Look at the gauge on that, it's super thick. This looks very industrial and well made. The whole thing looks like it could withstand a, a collapse. There's nothing else in either of these boxes, so we're going to move them out of the way. All right, on this page, well, first it says I should have a screwdriver and another person. We'll see about that. Uh, here is, it gives me the A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh, uh, they've labeled the package A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I and as well as screws for the keypad. So that should be pretty easy to follow. Then it has some other things here and let's put that together. Okay, I got this parts list here uh, on the second page and these are the parts. I've sorted them so we can kind of go over what is what. So this part one, lifting column I times two, it's these two here. Uh, they're the one of the two heaviest pieces. You can see they have a hole on them up here, a little ledge there. Uh, they look like that on on this side, and uh, then we go to number two here, lifting column number two with motor. That's obviously these two uh, and the motor. Foot number two, or foot. There's two of them. One for each side. You can see they have these black pieces on them. And there's two of them. One for each side. And they have a little bit of adjustment I can see there. Uh, for uneven floor. Uh, support beam left number two. And support beam right number two. Now I can't tell left to right just looking at these. And... I kind of figure it, figure it out when I get into it, but it's these ones with these little lips on them. Uh, and uh, I'll be able to figure it out once we get a little closer to those parts. Um, connection rod times two. That's these uh, longer pieces. From what I can tell. Baffle times two. Appears to be these two pieces here. Side bracket times two. That's these longer pieces here. And there's two of them. Remember these came out of two different boxes. And then we have uh, 
transmission rod times two. That's these two pieces here. This is what's gonna be spinning and moving that desk up and down. So don't take care of those, don't crush them. Um, Handset times one. That's a, this little piece here. It's obviously gonna plug into the master box and it has a couple pieces there. Adapter cable times one. I gotta figure that's this piece here. Power plug times one. Looks like a power plug to me, figure eight style. Two prong. There we have it, there's your power plug. ST42 times two, I'm guessing it's these uh, pieces here. So um, we'll figure that out when we get closer. And now let's move to page three and we're gonna look at number one. Attach the support beam left to the lifting column two times two. So you're doing it twice and it shows you that you need A and D, A times one, the five by five and the D times two. So I'm gonna be opening up this, pulling out the largest wrench because uh, that's going to be the 5x5 five five based on the previous page here where it showed it had 2x5, 3x3, 4x4, and 5x5, five five, so the largest wrench. And going back, we're going to do D, so we're going to grab a couple of these, and it looks like we're going to need uh, at least two of those. And we're going to attach, looks like... Uh, a and D together. Attach the support beam left to the lifting column. So we're gonna be doing the left side. So I'm gonna to have to figure out which one's the left sides here. Okay, I got this parts list here uh, on the second page and these are the parts. I've sorted them so we can kind of go over what is what. So this part one, Lifting column I times two. It's these two here. Uh, they're the one of the two heaviest pieces. You can see they have a hole on them up here, a little ledge there. Uh, they look like that on, on this side. And uh, then we go to number two here. Lifting column number two with motor. That's obviously these two uh, and the motor. Foot number two, or foot, there's two of them, one for each side. You can see they have these black pieces on them. And there's two of them, one for each side. And they have a little bit of adjustment I can see there uh, for uneven floor. Uh, support beam left number two and support beam right number two. Now I can't tell left and right just looking at these and I kind of figure it, figure it out when I get into it, but it's these ones with these little lips on them. Uh, and uh, I'll be able to figure it out once we get a little closer to those parts. Um, connection rod times two. That's these uh, longer pieces. what I can tell. Baffle times two appears to be these two pieces here. Side bracket times two. That's these longer pieces here. And there's two of them. Remember these came out of two different boxes. And then we have a uh, transmission rod times two. That's these two pieces here. This is what's gonna be spinning and moving that desk up and down. So don't take care of those, don't crush them. Um, Handset times one. That's a, this little piece here. It's obviously gonna plug into the master box and it has a couple pieces there. Adapter cable times one. I gotta figure that's this piece here. Power plug times one. Looks like 
Looks like a power plug to me, figure eight style. Two prong. There we have it, there's your power plug. ST4 two times two, I'm guessing it's these uh, pieces here. So um, we'll figure that out when we get closer. And now let's move to page three and we're gonna look at number one. Attach the support beam left to the lifting column two times two. So you're doing it twice and it shows you that you need A and D, A times one to five by five and the D times two. So I'm gonna be opening up this, pulling out the largest wrench, uh, cause that's gonna be the five by five based on the previous page here where it showed it had two by five, three by three, four by four and five by five. So the largest wrench and going back, we're gonna do D. So we're gonna grab a couple of these and it looks like we're gonna need uh, at least two of those. And we're gonna attach, looks like uh, A and D together. Attach the support beam left to the lifting column. So we're gonna be doing the left side. So I'm gonna have to figure out which one's the left sides here. Okay, here's how I read this scenario. I look at this picture here and I see that and that's pointing inward, the motor is facing towards me. So I grabbed this piece here, facing the same direction as that. I put the two bolts in and I'm gonna take it and screw it into that right there where the motor's at and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so I got this in and tightened down. And I just wanna show you on this other one. These holes here are very are threaded and these bolts that we put in here uh, tightened very nicely, went in without any force. I didn't try to over tighten them or over force them. I just made it sure that when I pulled it, it was firm and it didn't move anymore, but I didn't try to like crank it down. So you don't want to strip it, um, but you do want to make it uh, tout. We're finished with one. I'm going to go to number two here and it says attach the sport support beam right to the lifting column number two. And it says I'm going to need that same wrench again and two more of those screws. And you can see it's going to be this column here, the one without the motor. And this, uh, you can see I use one of the beams here. I'm gonna use the opposite beam here. And we're gonna put these together with that screw in this fashion. And I'm gonna look for that hole there that's in here. So I'm probably looking for that hole right there. And I'm gonna make sure it's facing away and that this is attached on the other side of that. And this is getting, looks like screwed down into most likely that double side there, that those two holes. Okay, one thing I noticed in this picture is that that little piece is sticking out there. Um, and if you look at this, it's this piece, this support piece, it doesn't stick out on the other side. It's It sticks out on this side. So that's how you know which way the long end is gonna go and you're not sending it out that direction over that way, you're sending it this direction here. Um, so there's that, and I think we have a win here. Uh, we'll move forward to number three, where it says install transmission rod. And it says I need that transmission rod, and it says I need that wrench, and uh, 2.5 by 2.5. So we'll look at that, and I see this picture here, where it's laying down with the rod going up and with the motor uh, facing up as well. And uh, it mentions a few things here. Insert the opposite end of the rod into the corresponding list lifting column. Uh, please ensure that the rotation angle does not exceed 60 degrees. And I'll try to uh, show you that as I put it in. 
and please ensure the proper alignment of the designated end of rod with mounting holes. So, and then it says tighten the screws. So I'm gonna grab that wrench and put this down and see what I can figure out. Okay, this is how I laid it out so I could see what I was doing and make sure I was making all the right connections. I put the rod here. I put this piece here with the, it facing up and with this piece facing up. And I made it look pretty much like this. And what I found is that this here has a little hexagonal piece in here. And then this is going to hook into that gear there. And I made it so this would face out here. So when I put this in here, it's all going to be easier to reach here. And I'll show you right when I tighten it. I started with putting it in in this end first. And now I'm going to attach it here. And I ended up wiggling these a little bit uh, so I could get them in. Okay, so I... I was looking at number three and I was definitely uh, number four and I was definitely confused. Uh, this piece here uh, goes here and this screw I had already put in and I'd already put it in over there. So you're only supposed to put in this first screw farthest away from that end before you get to this point. And then you put in this through this piece. So I'm going to unscrew this one, unscrew that one, pull them out, and then put them through with this. And I, and I can tell that's the right place because these screws here also by the motor have that cut out for it. So it took a little finagling, but it went in. You can see that lines up there really well. And here you have to kind of move this a little bit to kind of get it to get through the right hole but once you start threading it it's just easy peasy and so here we are on that step we finished step four which looks like that picture and i'm going to go to step five which is install the foot and you can see it has please prioritize the installation of diagonal screws and it shows the picture of it going to the bottom of the feet. So we have this part here, uh, right here, which is down here. And you see this part here with the uh, edges sticking out. That's these pieces. And then you have the leg. So we're going down towards the other side down there, away from the motor. Away from the motor and up there. And that's where we're putting the legs. It says we need uh, the 4x4 four four wrench and the H screws. And we're going to need eight of them. So let's check it out. Um, I guess I should also mention that if I looked at this on the bottom, you can see it has uh, threading there on both of these sides where those feet are going to go. Okay, I got it positioned. And I'm going to take these screws here, which I've already found the right Allen wrench. Notice the feet are facing down. And I'm going to screw different holes at an angle into the legs. And put all eight in. I recommend screwing them all partially in, just a couple turns each, and getting them all in before tightening them all down. That way you don't have to fight to try to fight to uh, try to find a threading. And they all thread pretty easily and uh, very smoothly. So you shouldn't have to force any of them in. Okay, these are hand tightened down, but not so tight that it, you'll strip it but they're tightened down. I always like to test your legs. So that's all the way into the leg and I like to back it off just a little and back it off just a little 
And keep an eye, keep in mind that if you want it to even out when you finally get to the floor, because it will be uneven wherever you put it a little bit, uh, know that it rotates towards this motor. So that's kind of the way to bring it down. Um, and there you have it. So step six shows you a completed piece and it shows you this darkened piece. And it tells you that attention, the installation steps to the right part are the same as those for the left part. So here goes your other parts here. And we're gonna put it together just like this side, except this time <laughs> when I do the screws on that top, I'm just gonna put in a one right off the bat. Um, so I'll show you once I get to this scenario here. Just a little heads up when I was sliding around this piece here, these pieces popped out. Don't worry, we'll pop them back in later. But I just want you to know that when you're sliding it around on the carpet, they'll probably come off. I was working on the second one. I just want to say while I'm putting in the beam here, I did find it easier to not tighten these screws down too much. Uh, until you have them both threaded. Uh, just makes for an easier process, then tighten them down. Okay, I got this set up. All the feet are facing up. And the motors are opposite each other. And I'll be picking back this up after I move my cat. Okay, this next step is not as clear as it, as it could be. You're going to grab these two wrenches and those small threaded screws. So they look like these screws here. Those are the bigger ones. And these are the smaller ones with the smaller wrench that fits inside of them. Kind of the two middle wrenches in this process. And it's telling you to put them in here, but it doesn't really tell you where. And it's telling you to thread. So what, really, what they're trying to tell you to do is that this longer bar here slides in and out. That's your max level. If you look at it here, it says max on it. That's as far out as they want it. They don't want it out here, basically there or deeper in. Um, you're going to take those screws and you're going to thread them into these holes. The smaller one here, the bigger one there. It's the only way they'll work anyways. Um, and you just want to give them a few screws, but you don't want to tighten them down yet. Because there's going to be a process after this. Um... If you flip the page to eight, and it has this uh, here, installation steps are as follows, circle, square, triangle, and they're talking about these circles, that square, and then these triangles. So what they're trying to tell you to do is uh, wait for the tabletop, which you can see is below it, because they're having you install onto the tabletop first, then you're going to... Uh, uh, just where you need to be and then you're going to tighten down these screws um, into the tabletop I don't have my tabletop yet it's still in the mail so once that comes we'll go through that process in the meantime I'm going to add those screws to each one of these sections and I'm going to go into my other two and set those two up and get ready for both my tabletops that are on their way and we'll go over the rest of this manual okay I got the desk out of the packaging it's on its face the face looks good has some pre-drilled holes in it which I'll assess had a chip right out of the box before I even moved it it had a chip on it unfortunate um, the box did have a little bit of damage but that's the way it rolls sometimes I will bring it to their attention now. So these are the boxes they came in. I can see that there is a dent there. There's a dent here that's pretty significant that contributed to the chip. And all along the edges. The one here on the other side. Here's pretty good on this side, short of this dent here which may have caused some impact or a chip um, this had no dents on this side I can see 
see a pretty good one there. This still has a tabletop in it. We can see a pretty good dent on this side here. Right here. Other than that, I think we're doing okay. We'll see how this one looks when I pull it out. Well, I got this measured out. I'm about to screw it down into these holes here and on the internals there and there and there. And then along the back edge, there's four screws in each location on this these pieces. Um, it would have been helpful if in the manual they uh, actually gave some guidance for this part here where you're putting it on the top. This didn't come with any pre-drilled pieces. It did come with a chip. That's about it. Um, uh, short of not being happy about that, um, I got to move forward because I need this set up so I can do some work. Um, and I got one more of these to put up. Um, I ended up tightening these first against what this recommended so I could get this whole rectangle square and then I positioned it center to where I wanted it um, and I tightened down these pieces here just so I could keep it square while I was uh, adjusting it to screw it down. Um, I'm going to screw this down now and I'll be back. I'll be using the G screws here. Also might have been helpful if they had given us some uh, um, a recommendation to drill bit and about these parts, the rubber grommets in there. I'm just going to assume I can go like that and drill it in, hoping it doesn't chip it too much. Well, I did number eight and I screwed everything in, so my frame is set and in the piece and I took the tape off of this. I'm not sure if this piece here uh, this this rubber piece uh, comes off pretty easy and I'm not sure if that's supposed to come off or not. Um, if it's just a dust cover not sure. Doesn't say in the instructions. Same thing on the other side. Um, I did make a determinant based on nine. They saw the baffle uh, I put the baffles in. I recommend doing more towards this. Leave a little bit more room on this side. Uh, it's easier to screw in. That one was a little tight on that end. Um, but protects the, the axle going across and from incidental. Um, not going to solve a catastrophic. So the baffle's done. Install the handset. Um, I'm probably going to put it on this corner over here because when you flip the desk, it's going to be facing me, uh, which puts the power probably about here and uh, in the handset. Uh, well, let's see. It actually uh, do the handset and then the power placement is going to go looks like opposite the motor so I'll probably put it here and have that one come straight across and then uh, have the handset come over somehow onto the, this section here with this piece here facing away so it'll probably be about that position when I get it all installed okay well I have gotten the cords uh, down and plugged in to here. That's how I decided to plug them in. I wasn't sure whether to go for this plug or this plug or this or the one below it. So I went for the ones that I thought would be easiest, the outside and the top. Uh, power is plugged in there and I just need to plug in the cord there. Uh, and I put in that piece over there. So I'm gonna flip this desk over, plug it in and try it out. Well, I got my first one in place. And uh, now I'm going to work on this second one and put it 
against that wall over there. So here are my final desks, or my desks in their final resting position, I should say. One thing I do want to point out is that the screw for this one broke off the head of it and it's basically sheared halfway through. I, I haven't tried to put another screw through because it would require me taking apart the whole flipping it upside down and redoing all this and getting the room to do it and it seems like the desk is heavy enough that it'll stay on top without moving with the other screws uh, holding it in place so I'm gonna call it good there but that's my experience with a flexi desk I do love the bases they are super quiet and strong well, that pretty much concludes the end of this video. I put some pictures at the end of the manual and of the uh, some of the damage uh, originally out of the package. Um, other than that, I'm pretty satisfied with both of the desks. And um, I just probably would have went with a different uh, top than chipboard. Um, and obviously, uh, getting damaged along the way was a pretty good indication that it wasn't as good a quality. I just wanted white for photo reasons, uh, but I could have built something on top of wood or something else that was a little bit more uh, durable. So live and learn, and hopefully they will come through with fixing the points on that account so I can at least... Uh, get some benefits from that and maybe they'll see this video and and fix it it had been a couple weeks uh i initially did it immediately that night and followed up the next two days they said it would take a couple weeks it's been several weeks it has not happened and so now i'm done and uh thank you for watching the video like and subscribe if you uh found it helpful